As I mentioned, Peter Carpenter is here. He is the head coach of the McGill team. Uh, you're in your 14th season, 15th year, uh, just named uh, for the fourth consecutive year, RSEQ Coach of the Year. Um, we were told it's imperative that we talk to you before you lose your voice. That hasn't happened yet. Not yet. Okay, good. Um, what does it mean to you, or what does it mean to McGill? to be hosting this event for the first time since, what, 1979? Um, it's really special for me. I'm actually a resident of the city of Point Clair. I was head coach at this club prior to coming to McGill. So for me to host nationals as a McGillian in my old home of Point Clair uh, is really, really special. Um, and, and so far, so good. The meet went really well this morning. Very, very fast preliminary session. So it's, it's really exciting. So Bradley, uh, talk about the caliber of swimmers that we're going to see here. I mean, some of them we will see in Paris in July. Very, very good chance. Uh, multiple Olympic prospects here, some that stand out uh, that I'll mention that you'll see racing prominently tonight. You'll see Shona Branton and you'll see Alexandre LePage in the Women's Hunter Breaststroke, two major prospects that will be trying out for Paris later in May, uh, undoubtedly, uh, with, a, with a good chance of one or both of them making the team there. Um, we have Gabe Master Mateo in the Men's 100 Breaststroke. That is the Tokyo Olympian who went to represent Canada there. So, yeah, I'm sure he'll be trying to repeat and get a trip to Paris as well, uh, yeah. representing Canada there. I'm Richard Dagenet alongside Bradley Crocker at the U Sports National Swimming Championships. Day one is done. Thoughts, uh, Bradley? Uh, surprises? Things that you were happy to see? Things you didn't expect to see? Uh, some great racing throughout the meet. I mean, a highlight for me is both the Calgary and McGill, like alumni to some extent in swimming. Uh, seeing them battle for the gold in that last relay was, was very special to see. Very cool for both of those teams. Um, we certainly saw great swims, I mean, throughout the night. That woman's hunter breaststroke held up in the sense of a being very head-to-head -head between LePage and Sophia Branton. Um, Branton with a really great 107 performance at this meet definitely bodes well for her in, in her quest to hopefully make the Olympic team later uh, this year. So we definitely saw some, some great swimming, and I expect more in the next two days. You, I mean, UBC Thunderbirds are a powerhouse. I, I'd love for you to, to explain how you managed to be a powerhouse so consistently or at least help me explain it to the viewers. <laughs> oh man, it's really intentional. Uh, it takes a lot of work to come year after year after year, but I will say when you have legacy and generations coming behind you, there is a culture of excellence and a culture of hard work and perseverance and fun that first years get to step into and they see you know, UBC, they see them showing up year after year, and that gets them excited, and when they show up as first years, they know that that's what they get to participate in year after year. 340 swimmers from 28 schools across the country. Uh, maybe talk about the point totals. Where are we at? The powerhouses are where the powerhouses should be. Yes, and so I can mention on the women's side right now, uh, we have a pretty tight battle for third. McGill University sits in fourth right now with 223 and a half points. University of Calgary in third with 272 and a half points. Um, for perspective, uh, 50 points is about two A finals separating them at this point. Uh, so pretty close, and I expect that to close based on the prelim results this morning. Let's see what these men have in short for the last 50. Big legs coming from Veridat of McGill in five. What a battle. What a battle. Veridat is answering strongly on this video. He has got himself out to the slight lead. We have just 10 meters to go with the home team in front. We are getting some volume in the building here. And it's well earned in a fairy tale ending yes. to this day two session. The home team, McGill University, takes the win anchored by Matt Veridat in lane five for the gold medal. Hitting the wall second. What a race. Uh, with an excellent finish there, looks to be U of T, Dong Feng getting them all the way into second there in lane two. You said, I mean, you're, you've won a gold in the 100 meter backstroke, um, but you did compete in 200 meter. And did you prepare differently for the two races? Well, 200 meter backstroke, it, it's definitely a little more complex tactically, a little more to think about. You you always want to be swimming fast whenever you're racing, of course, everybody does. Uh, you need to be a lot more mindful about conserving energy, not kicking too hard early on in the race, maximizing your underwater kick, and things like that. So I, I would say the preparation for 200 backstroke, just a little more thinking involved, at least in how I approached it.
would I be wrong in saying that this race must be as grueling psychologically as physically, or no, it must, it's so painful that it, it doesn't matter where your mind is or what kind of shape it's in? Well, absolutely a tough race mentally. These athletes are tough physically and mentally. You have to be to race this event. And then we're noting the swimmers that do events like this often have difficult schedules across the meet. All of their races are those tough ones, the 800 free, 400 free, 400 IM, 200 fly, uh, those type events on the schedule. So just some mentally tough athletes that work on that in training and in competition. On the list of mentally tough athletes, was your name there? <laughs> I think most distance swimmers would not put me early in the conversation. Okay. So maybe you don't know how it works, but I'll ask you how it works anyway. Does does a swimmer go to the coach and say, hey coach, I'd like to swim the 1500 meter, or does the coach go to a swimmer and say, would you like to swim the 1500 meter? <laughs> In terms of choosing an event schedule for nationals, it's always a conversation between the swimmers and the coach or what the most sensible four events are for them at these national championships. That comes down to what they train the most for day-to-day, -day, what their specialty events are. They also need to look at the schedule. It can be very hard to swim events that are back-to-back -back on the program, so that affects decision-making as well. Like, as a coach, can you actually coach a mind to be able to endure this? Oh, that's a great question. I think the coaches can motivate swimmers to an extent to, to you know, work beyond what they think their limits are and, and to work hard in general. But I think a lot of that motivation and drive has to come from the athlete. They need to be that type of person who does not shy away uh, from working hard and putting in the extra effort day in and day out to prep for events of this uh, demanding nature. Vous regardez les championnats nationaux de natation U-Sport, c'est la troisième et la dernière journée de compétition. Ici, Richard Dagenet, en compagnie de Bradley Crocker. You're watching the U-Sports National Swimming Championships. The third and final day of competition, I'm Richard Dagenet, alongside Bradley Crocker. Le quatrième nageur pour l'Université de Laval, c'est Hugo Janvier, qui attend son coéquipier. qui nage très très bien mais comme, euh, comme tu dis Bradley c'est difficile à, à voir si, euh, si leur temps va être bon ou non parce qu'ils sont tout seuls exactement oui. mais c'est sûr que ils se forcent ils poussent beaucoup On va toucher dans quelques secondes. Le temps pour l'équipe de le Rouge et Or, c'est 3 minutes 35.12. B-Final coming up. The men's 100 meter backstroke. Driss Lariki de l'Université de Laval en couloir numéro 1. Charles-Antoine Boucher dans le couloir numéro 2 pour l'Université de Sherbrooke. Brendan Oswald in lane three from the University of Toronto from McGill. Tristan Gauvier in lane four. Kanika Bracco in lane five from the University of British Columbia. Min Nguyen from the University of Alberta in lane six. In lane seven, Alan Kurji from the University of Ottawa and from the University of Calgary, Mark McKenzie in lane eight. For the latest news from this event, you can go to the mcgillathletics.ca website. The preliminary races are broadcast uh, all morning, uh, and then Bradley and I will be back at five o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Uh, pour les plus récentes nouvelles concernant cet événement, visitez mcgillathletics.ca. Les épreuves préliminaires euh, sont diffusées le matin et Bradley et moi, on est, on est en onde à partir de 17 heures demain. Fait on espère que vous allez être là avec euh, nous autres. Also, want to take a moment to thank our uh, production team, Scratch Takes, our director.